people right, right there. Uh, okay, my name is Mike Westbrook. Hey, I can even walk around. Um, my name is Mike Westbrook. I'm the team leader for the Midwestern Athenians. Uh, we took our name from the fact that Jacksonville was once known as the Athens of the Midwest. Uh, and uh, we have nothing to say for ourselves now, so we still hang desperately onto that memory. Uh, but uh, the initial impetus for this project was our discovery of a particular video game. And it was a very confusing video game when we first came in contact with it because it had no goal. There was no way to actually win. Uh, it had uh, very little violence, though there is some in some versions of the game. Uh, the graphics were crude. They consisted of uh, squares and cubes. Uh, and uh, it was baffling to us why people found it as compelling as they did, but they did. People were passionate about this game. And that included members of my own family. Uh, so uh, the game, of course, is Minecraft. And I am curious, and I'd like to see a show of hands, how many people in here are Minecraft players? Raise your hands if you... Okay, we only have a few folks who have actually played the game. How many people are familiar with it or have heard of it? Okay, very good. Very good. Um, it has gotten a lot of publicity because uh, it's such a flexible platform. And I think that's the key to the passion that people have for the game. The, uh, the fact that, uh, that you can do essentially anything in Minecraft. So of course, realizing that, we started thinking, can we put a library in Minecraft? Uh, can, we, uh, uh, can we do information literacy instruction in Minecraft? Uh, and that was the initial goal. Um, once we started looking into it, we did discover that uh, there is sound theory behind this. Uh, I'd like to pretend that the theory drove the, the project. Uh, it didn't, uh, but it was nice to know that we had the theory behind it. So I'm going to turn the mic over to Jan Figa, uh, who's going to give us a brief introduction to the uh, to the uh, theory behind uh, gamification with the emphasis on brief, right, Jan? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now, I was going to do the wedding singer, but I guess not really. Um, you'll see, because I love movies, and I don't like the big light in my face, but uh, anyway. Uh, in the lower right-hand corner, there are, there's an image. Do you recognize it? Matrix, that's right, 1999. Okay, so what you are feeling is not air. Now, you may discover that simulations are really important. What I did was try to put everything on two slides. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Bad thing. <laughs> so I like to violate everything I can in life. And so um, there you go. Uh, going down the sort of um, rabbit hole, you go from simulation to a particular former simulation that's a game and there's some words to describe what that is I'm gonna be dancing around but not too much because I've got a bad ankle so there will be no dancing um, I won't win a prize again but that's okay um, there are three examples given here on the lower left hand side you see the Cuban Missile Crisis actually that is a hyperlink if you ever want to go and, and check it out and so forth so in the educational field we like to actually have experiments running uh, simulations so that people, the students, can learn things. And that's one of the examples, the Cuban Missile Crisis, which we know the, you know, what happened. We sort of know what happened. But you give the students uh, certain uh, input and you see what they have as output. They learn. There's another example that's the Harry S. Truman. Again, a simulation platform so that you can learn by doing. What will you do as students given certain information? Uh, there's also, you can see that there are uh, particular online courses that are free where you can learn about video games and learning and that finishes the first slide again emphasis on brief in the upper left hand corner there is the color money because my little brain had this uh, not fart but the idea that I gotta have something about uh, Tom Cruise great hair great hair there and Paul Newman so actually I took, uh, because it would be legal to actually download all this stuff and put it up there, so I didn't do that. I just uh, took a 
screenshot from a you know, movie because I took my little camera out. This is high tech. Okay, if you've never seen The Color Money, raise your hand. Shame on you. Okay. <laughs> Here's uh, this text up here, Kustok is tough, that's a video game, blah, blah, blah. Newman, old guy, old fart. Okay, is there any money in this? You know, you know, you could retirement time, you know, you need some money. So is there any money in it? Basically, well, this is not the point guy here. This is that if you're really good at this, you can go and you can computerize tanks, Star Wars. A heavy score on stock is a shoe-in at the point. That's West Point. If you look on the right-hand side up there, there's an actual article from 2009 written there at West Point at where they're talking about education through video games. So this obviously goes from a movie, I think it's 1986 or 84, uh, 2009, they are talking about at the point. So that which, when I saw the movie for the first time, I'm, on, I'm, I'm with Paul Newman. Dude, you're so wrong. You'll never make it. I was wrong, I was wrong, and I admit it, and so I'll be one of the very few people, I guess, I'll just tell you I was wrong. Okay, there's a definition, Minecraft, all this good stuff, there's actually a website, you probably guessed it, and uh, some form of um, words that describe what you can do, but the best thing you can actually, if you want to learn something, is by doing it, so there will be a live demo, if it fails, if it flakes out, we have a backup plan. There's some images down there and what I did was I was very selective in the websites that you can find to demo what Minecraft is. And you can see that there are trailers and they're very cute. They give you a sense of the flexibility of the power of the game. And that's what I look for in any game. What's the power? Will I get entertained? Will I learn something? Will I be a not just a consumer? Will I be a producer? And that's why that platform is Excellent. I'm going to turn it over now to Jake, who will take it for a spin. We wanted to give you a little history of, of the project first before we uh, actually got into the game. Then we are going to try and play the game here in, in, uh, in front of you. Uh, but uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about how the project evolved, because we did have a fair number of challenges along the way. Um, we started out with incredibly ambitious plans. Uh, and let me tell you, if we had been able to make those plans work, we would have made so much money. It would have been just <laughs> unbelievable. But, but we couldn't make that work. Uh, so as the nine months have progressed, we have gradually scaled down our ambitions. But I think we ended up still with a, with a usable game, a, a, uh, uh, a usable project. Um, among the challenges that we faced, as the nine months have progressed, we have gradually lost members of our team. Uh, we lost two, yeah, we had a fair amount of attrition. We, we lost two people before the team was even formalized. We lost someone else as the, uh, as the nine months progressed. So the Midwestern Athenians consist of us three right here. So that was challenge number one. Challenge number two was that we rapidly discovered that we did not know Jack Duty about Minecraft, okay? <laughs> and we <laughs> and that was a challenge. Uh, uh, we also discovered uh, that at least two of us are old. <laughs> and our brains don't do this anymore. So uh, we were struggling in the beginning to, uh, to learn how to build, to learn how to, uh, uh, how to maneuver in Minecraft and, and handle the game uh, as fluidly and fluently as, as uh, uh, the uh, passionate uh, advocates and, and uh, players of the game can. Uh, so we turned to a resource. We turned to two resources, actually. Um, and I want to uh, give a shout out to the first resource because they're sitting here in the room. And in fact, I think they could qualify as additional members of the team, and that is our IT staff at Illinois College. Why don't you guys raise your hands back there and give them a big round of applause, okay? Because these guys were untiring in their efforts to assist us. 
um, with uh, getting this thing going. They found the project interesting, at least I think you did. You faked it well if you, if you didn't. Uh, and uh, they were willing to devote a lot of hours to keeping the server running and, and uh, figuring out problems and things like that. So the project really would not have happened without their assistance. That was the first uh, uh, form of assistance that we turned to. The second uh, was my children. Uh, because we discovered that you must be 14 to be able to do this, okay? <laughs> uh, no, actually, uh, my 23-year-old also helped, so uh, there, there is an upper cap, yes, that's right. You and I are past it. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, they, were, they were incredibly helpful. Uh, my daughter basically spent every night for weeks tutoring me in how to build things in, in, uh, in Minecraft. Um, and uh, it was challenging at best for both of us uh, because I had a tendency to, to start screaming and run from the room and she'd have to calm me down. Uh, I would, uh, I'd hit the wrong button and destroy things, uh, knock down an, an entire bookcase or whatever, which is really very easy to do if you've ever, if you've ever played Minecraft. Uh, but she was incredibly patient. And uh, she, uh, she stayed with me, and, uh, and so did my other children. And uh, really, uh, thinking about what lessons did we learn in the course of putting this thing together, uh, one is young people uh, are really amazingly willing to assist uh, if you're doing something that they find interesting. Uh, and I think that's very nice. Um, also, I told them I wouldn't feed them if they didn't help me. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> uh, that's, that's not true. I, I, I wouldn't do that. Uh, there are problems or, or uh, uh, occasional uh, difficulties when you're working with your family. Uh, we had the, the Minecraft library almost in perfect shape. And uh, I logged on one night and discovered that my son, my 23-year-old son, uh, Daniel, had logged on in the middle of the night. Uh, and put a row of severed heads over the door of the, uh, the <laughs> library. Uh, it's not as bad as it sounds because they look like Lego figures, you know, so, so it's not really that gruesome. But I said, Daniel, severed heads? He said, that will discourage delinquent returns, Dad. <laughs> and maybe he's right, you know, maybe we should consider that. Uh, so uh, uh, we took the severed heads off. Uh, and, uh, and some of the other uh, things that he added. Uh, but without their help, I really don't think that this, uh, that this would have happened um, as smoothly and, and, uh, uh, as it did. Uh, so we are going to attempt to play this game in front of you. Uh, Jake is going to, uh, this is Jake over here, uh, Jake is going to be uh, uh, running the, uh, uh, what you see on the screen, I also am going to be logged on to Minecraft, and I am going to try to interact uh, uh, with... Wow. Yeah. I'm also going to try to inter uh, interact with, with, uh, with the character as we, as we go through the game. Um, in contrast to everyone else who has uh, rehearsed extensively, we have not rehearsed at all. Okay. The reason is, is that our server was, was not functioning until uh, just this morning. Uh, and uh, again, the tireless efforts of, of uh, uh, the IT staff from actually several colleges and universities <laughs> have contributed to making this thing work. But we have not had the chance to run this on this screen and see how it works. So. Uh, 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 but we have a backup plan, that's right. So uh, if this tanks, don't worry about it. Well, we'll go to the video, all right? Uh, so let me hand the, uh, the mic over to Jake, uh, and we'll get uh, started with Minecraft. OK. Uh, all right. Um, <laughs> That better? Um, okay. Forget the mic. Okay. So I'll try and talk loud. Um, I'll push it near you. Near me. That'll work. Okay. 
Um, so we spent part of our grant money on this software called Minecraft EDU. Um, basically, they provided us with the server software and then 25 licenses that you could use in a classroom. Um, so it, add, it offers up a few other kind of bonus sort of things that you don't get in the standard vanilla Minecraft. Um, so um, let me just get in here. Okay, it looks like looks like everything is working properly right now. So, um, <laughs> thanks. Uh, so one of the things you can it offers you here is you, when you log in as a student, it gives you a variety of kind of different uh, avatars to use. So. If you have a classroom full of 25 students, theoretically, um, it would at least give some sort of variety and let them kind of customize who they are a little bit. So I will connect. And here is our library. So we kind of realized as we got into it and we had already had a building going and we were working along that probably to, if we had it to do over again, we would make a, and if we were in one institution also, I'm at a different college across town. So I think it's beneficial to make, if you're going to do this, to make the building as exact a replica of your building as you can. Um, because it kind of gives those incoming freshmen who aren't that comfortable in the library maybe, they have this virtual version of the library. They can see the reference desk is here in the Minecraft library. Hey, it's also there in the physical library. So we kind of realized that part way through and we're at two different colleges so we we didn't do that for this version but this is kind of a work in progress so and there's there's mike <laughs> and there's mike jumping up and down <laughs> um so first thing in the in the kind of foyer here out in the courtyard uh we put up a little brief the the, the control the basic controls are really pretty simple so most 18-year-old freshmen coming into college will be able to master this relatively quickly. It took us, as Mike said, a little bit longer. Um, there's a lot, there was a lot of smashing of things that we were trying to put things in and uh, that sort of stuff. So students, people logged in as students aren't able to do any of that sort of destruction or construction or whatever that the teacher role can do. Um, so we have brief walk through there. And another uh, aspect of the Minecraft EDU that we at the beginning, we thought we would probably we would take advantage of this um, is the ability to push out assignments to the class. So as you can see up here in the top corner, it shows there's an assignment. If the student presses M, it shows them, it says, open the chest of the reference desk to find your mission. As we got into it, we realized there is no way to kind of stack uh, a, a list of assignments. So you would say, push out assignment one, push out assignment two. So that meant as we got going, we realized, oh, we're going to have to type all of these assignments uh, at, at that moment and send them out. And we realized for 25 students, that may get a little, you can send out mass things, mass assignments, but if everybody's kind of working at their own pace, um, it would get a little, it was basically a teacher would spend the entire time typing out assignments and sending them to different people and keeping track of which assignment was going to who. So we kind of adapted um, the way we were going to do it a little bit instead of, we have this first assignment and then kind of worked it into sort of a, a treasure hunt kind of thing. Um, each assignment kind of leading, or the first assignment getting you started and then just going from there. So, we come in, we have our, our, our gate, um, have a fireplace. I don't know how many libraries have fireplaces, yes. but this one does. Um, so we look around, we find, oh, here's the reference desk. If we had a teacher, teacher logged in at the same time, the teacher would probably be standing here behind the reference desk, uh, the librarian character. Um, you can chat back and forth, you can ask questions of the librarian if you're having trouble. Uh, they can work in teams, that was kind of the idea. We realized also that 25 people kind of running around in this building, uh, this building's relatively small for 25 people, so it may get a little kind of hectic, so we kind of reimagine things and maybe having them work in teams. Um, and also, like I said, this is a work in progress. This isn't our final. Uh, the final thing would probably, I would say, be bigger, have more components to it. But for the purposes of this uh, demo, we just have a few different uh, assignments. So there's Mike really close. Um, okay, so are we, our assignment, we're at the reference desk. <laughs> Open the chest and pick a topic. Find resources on your topic in the library. Take them to the circulation desk. The team with the most resources wins. Um, so, and that's... One of, the, the, one of the 
issues also with the Minecraft platform. I think we, we chose it because it's so popular. So many, we figured so many students, incoming students, would be familiar with it. Um, they may not have the familiarity with a college campus. They have the familiarity with Lime Minecraft. But it kind of limits the ways that we can do things So here. So instead of having like a, a list of a, past, a stack of assignments or something like that, we have this chest um, that has some assignments in it. Some of the assignments are gone. That's interesting, okay. Um, <laughs> but, so the idea here is we would have a handful of assignments, the students would come in, pick something maybe they were interested in. So we have political science. Also, I'll mention one of the, one of the problems that we kept running into is the limited number of uh, characters that you can have in a title in one of these books. So there's some pretty creative abbreviations in here <laughs> that we had to get into. Uh, so that can be a little, hard, a little challenging. So have it to, uh, Doing it in the future, I think we'd kind of have a little more thinking into the topics that we were using, so things that would be a little more apparent what they are. But sports management, political science, those are fairly uh, obvious. As we get into the journal, the scholarly journals, the abbreviations get a little more creative. Um, I, I know what happened to the other. Do you? Yes, I, I put them all in the chest and the cert desk and forgot to put them back. I thought I put them back, but yeah. okay. <laughs> all right, so we'll take political science, uh, put that in our inventory. Get out here, and then the influence of wealth on political participation. So that's the topic that this student or this group of students is going to be researching here in the library and trying to find resources on. So um, I'm not sure if we have a pamphlet file on that, but over here we have a pamphlet collection. Um, so you kind of look through at the titles to see if anything would be pertinent to our topic. And I don't think any of those are going to be, no, okay, so there aren't any <laughs> for that particular topic. Maybe. <laughs> um, that's also, like I said, it's a work in progress. We're still working on uh, kind of filling up these different boxes uh, with titles. Over here, we go to the periodicals collection. Uh, open the chest, select a scholarly journal that might contain r articles related to your topic. So we have the Atlantic Monthly. Uh, UP Law Review, Time Magazine, Discover, Social Development, Discover, Discover Twice, okay. Uh, Tulane Law Review, and as you can see, some of the, like, uh, where we are? yeah, this one. So uh, good luck figuring out what exactly that is. Uh, I think it's Global Change Biology, I think is what it was. So, um, But political, maybe uh, the law reviews, so we select, select these law reviews. Get back out, and we wanted to have the being able to dis uh, discern between a scholarly article and a, pop a scholarly journal, a popular journal, because again, the limitations of the Minecraft format, we can't put in the colorful pictures, things like that that you find in a popular journal. It's one of the kind of the, the core things we say, um, but um, we do have list of the t of the of the articles, so that kind of they can kind of figure out if once you get into like the let's look at a Time magazine. It's got like infographics, these sort of poppy kind of uh, article titles. As you get into these things, the donor class, campaign finance, democracy, and participation, perceptions of, corru of corruption and campaign finance when public opinion determines constitutional law. Just from the sound of those, I mean, those are fairly obviously scholarly uh, articles. So we have some journal articles. Go over here to our reference collection. Open the chest and select reference books. You might find background information on your topic. Uh, global warming, encyclopedias, barbecue, uh, president facts, global change, music dictionary, art dictionary, political science. Yeah. It's, it's an eclectic reference collection. Um, so political science. Again, so let's open, the, open that one up. Look on the inside. Oxford Handbook of Political Behavior. That sounds like it's probably going to have good information on our topic. Um, then we'll go over here to the computer area. And these are, these are computers. <laughs> um, open the chest and select the keyword, keywords you'd use in order to find articles on your topic in a journal database. Another of the limitations, we can't have a hyperlink that takes them to our databases. So this is sort of the next best thing, just kind of trying to decide keywords when they have their topic see if they can pick out the sort of keywords that they would use for their, uh, for their topic. And we have climate change, wealth. Wealth probably would be in there, yeah. Um, influence, yeah. 
classroom, children, inclusion, behavior, renaissance art, violent polar bear, violent polar bears, uh, video games, political, okay, I'll take that. And maybe pay. So basically we kind of wanted to put a wide, and, and see if they could understand the concept of using synonyms. So if we pick the global, the global warming one, maybe they, we'll see if they know how, say, global warming, but also climate change would be applicable there. So kind of try to put a variety of things in there. And then, okay, so that's, that's the first floor. So we'll head up to the second floor for the circulating stacks. Um, so, okay, so find the proper Dewey range for your topic. Again, see if they can under, kind of understand where their, where their topic would fall in. Some of them are more obvious than others. Uh, I mean, philosophy, psychology. So we have the end caps with the ranges, um, social science. This one is kind of one that may, is a little more challenging maybe for them. Maybe they don't know what social science is. So that's kind of one of the other things that we're kind of needing to work on, um, maybe making it a little more obvious that the, the politics are, is going to fall into, um, fall into the, the social sciences. So, and again, the abbreviation problem, democracy, dist, I, I don't even remember what that one is. Um, but we'll find out. Democracy Distorted, Wealth, Influence, and, Democrat, and Democratic Politics by Jacob Rowan. That sounds perfect. Okay, so we've, and then it keeps, the range keeps going down, 700s, 800s, um, got some reading area, um, nice, nice windows to sit and read and look out there. Okay, so we've got all our sources, and we're going to head back to the circulation desk and see if we get, if we get there first. I think, I think we'll beat Mike, unless he took the other stairs. He didn't. Okay, so then we get back to the circulation desk. Um, oh, put your resources that you found in the chest, and then there we are. Um, so this is what we ended up with. We kind of thought at the beginning that we would use it as a maybe, maybe, ha maybe have a list of 10 questions that they would be asked to answer going throughout the library. Um, and that's certainly a way you could go with it. Um, then we kind of, we didn't know if we wanted to have a written list of questions that they had to work on or like a Google Doc that they had open at the same time. So we decided to go with this, this format, but there's really, it's so flexible, you can do pretty much anything, I mean, anything within reason, I guess, but I mean, the, the number of characters and things like that certainly limit what you can put in these titles, but um, there's a, a lot of different ways that you could handle it and use it in, a, in an instruction environment. So, there it is. Do you have anything else you wanted to mention? Um, I'm proud of this library. It was a labor of love. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what we have yet to do is actually try this in a classroom setting uh, and turn 20 students loose in the form of these avatars and watch them run around and see how that goes. Um, so we've never done it more, with more than three people at a time. Uh, so we still have that to do. Uh, and I want to try using this uh, in my first uh, lecture in my, um, my information literacy sections of uh, the um, freshman uh, composition course uh, on our campus. So uh, we're going to go live with this next semester and, and see how it goes. Um, also, we talked about, uh, as Jake said, uh, trying to customize the library uh, to, uh, uh, to make it look actually like a, a one of our libraries. Personally, uh, I'm not sure there's enough resolution here in, in the Minecraft uh, world to uh, to do that in a way that you'd even recognize that it's uh, that it's your own library. But uh, but we had a lot of fun putting it together, uh, and uh, uh, I hope it will prove to be useful. Um, so any any questions? Yes. We intend for them to use it in the classroom, uh, though uh, obviously they, if we set it up uh, this way, they could log in remotely. Uh, but right, yeah, we we. As we learned, you can actually do a lot of damage uh, if, you, uh, if you're in creative mode 
um, and uh, uh, and you're running loose in the building, you can uh, you can topple things a whole lot quicker than you would think. So, uh, yes. Right. This is not vanilla Minecraft, plain yeah, vanilla. It is a closed world, yes. And we, we weren't honest.